Cerveza cristal. Cerveza cristal. Hello there, fellow Star Wars nerds, and welcome to Unlimited Content, the podcast where two brothers talk about all of Star Wars film and TV in chronological order on the internet as an excuse to hang out more. We're your hosts, Sam and Jack, and this week we're talking about The Clone Wars Season 3, Episode 7, Assassin. <laughs> Sam, we're talking about Assassin today. Assassin has which... asked twice. <laughs> it has ass, ass, and in. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> There's ass, ass, and, and in, in Assassin. Well, so, well, well. glad we're off to a, a, a high-quality comedic start today. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> Sam, how are you today? Uh, I'm good. I uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm here. I'm alive. Uh, it's been a busy week. Mm-hmm. And the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl tomorrow, so I'm doing pretty good. That's exciting. That's exciting. Yes, we're recording this the day before the Super Bowl, so listeners, you know who won. Uh, we don't, and you know what? By the time that we edit this, I will probably have forgotten who won. I won't, because so, it'll either be very I'll, I'll exciting learn. or defeat. <laughs> see, for me, the way it works is every year, I'm like, I, I see in the news who won the Super Bowl, and then two weeks later, I've forgotten who played. <laughs> I live in a, a, a very different space. Although, I mean, I do work in news now, so I don't okay. know. Maybe. I mean, I, I have I have worked through one Super Bowl already, and I mm-hmm. forgot. Who won last year? It was the Chiefs. Was it, KC? it was Kansas City. Okay. Yeah. We're cool. Well, I vaguely remember Run that. it back. Run it back. Run it back. Okay. Um, well. Well. Uh, speaking of the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl is known for its many, many advertisements, right, oh, Sam? Oh, that it we, is. That it is. We gotta, yeah. We got to get in on some of that sponsorship money. Yes. Right? Yeah, we got to pay the bills somehow. To pay. Yes. We got to pay the bills for... Uh, to to get some of that, we got to get some of that sponsorship money from the, the big game, the big as game. they're le- legally required to call it on advertisements. The superb owl, yes the the competition where they only present the most superb of owls, Indeed. and we find out who is the 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 most superb owl of the year. Indeed. Um, but that aside, <laughs> we have a sponsor today. We're doing great. This, yeah, we're doing great. This episode of Unlimited Content is brought to you by your spare tire, because it's always there for you when you need it. Is it now? I mean... Did did you have enough spare should, tires? It should be. It I, should be. I did. I, <laughs> I did have tell, a spare tire. Do you, do you have um, a story to tell us, Jack? I have, <laughs> I have a story. What did you yeah, answer this week? I actually, so actually, so I, I, like, I write down ideas for, for sponsors for this podcast uh in a list and a while ago i wrote down your spare tire as an idea and then this past week within one week uh (laughs) i got two flat tires and had to replace three of them and i swear that that math does make sense just give me a second (laughs) to explain (laughs) so uh last um thursday I was coming home from I was like like pulling out of the the my work parking lot to go to my dinner break um and noticed that my it was like harder to pull out of my space than usual I was like what is happening so I got out of the car and saw that I had a flat so then I drove over to a place that was like less than a mile away because it was like you know it was a flat tire but it was still like drivable it, you know I, I didn't want to you know go through the whole rigmarole of changing into my my spare when I'm just going to be driving like less than a mile so uh i did that and i got my my tire replaced and everything and and it didn't need to be replaced because it was like it had two punctures in it it was like the the guy said that his his theory was that like i ran over a nail or something and the nail went inside the tire and then made another hole coming out of the tire and so (laughs) wow yeah um so that whatever punctured it was no longer there but it did have two holes in it Gosh. so um so i had to get my tire replaced that day so that wasn't that wasn't fun but it was a mostly painless experience and you know it was whatever um then less than a week later uh, on the next wednesday um after work so like i work late so this is like at 11 p.m i'm driving home and suddenly my, my car just feels like the, the the ride gets very bumpy very quickly and i'm like oh, is, oh, is this no. happening again <laughs> hold on 
<laughs> so I pull over into like an Olive Garden parking lot. Um, and I and, and like, when you're here, this time I like I, your family. So yeah, the, it's ex, a you know, place. except when it's except when they're closed. In which case, it's just you know a parking lot. When you're here. <laughs> when you're here, when you're that's here. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're here. Um, I pull over in the parking lot and I'm like, this time it, it feels really, really bad. Like I, I'm, my car's like going boom, 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 as I'm going oh, down the bad, road. Bad. And I'm like, I need to pull over very quickly. Oh my. So I went to the, the the first available parking lot, which is Olive Garden. I got out uh, and I went and looked at my my tire. This is a different tire. The first one was the the uh, front right tire, and this was the rear right tire this time. Ooh. And uh, it was just, like, destroyed. There was a tear along, like, three quarters of the whole tire. <laughs> oh, it was just, no. I was like, how did... I don't... Anyway, whatever. Um, so I, I looked at, at Google Maps, and of course, it was, you know, a Wednesday at like 11 p.m. so nothing was open that could like replace my tire plus i, I definitely could not drive on this tire oh, like it no. was <laughs> that was like physically impossible <laughs> yes so i was like okay i'm gonna have to replace the spare Re replace it with the spare so i did and then my goal was uh the next day to go uh get my tire replaced yeah uh do you, have, do, you a, do you have a full-size spare or just like one of the like the little donut things it was old it was a donut oh uh, it was stink donut. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's better it, than nothing, but it, it stinks. It's better than nothing. Yes. Um, <laughs> thanks to our sponsor this week, Better Than Nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, when you're here. When you're here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so I replaced that tire uh, with the, the spare. And then the next day, uh, I like have to get up and I, I go to, I have to drive to therapy. And then after therapy, I go to like the nearest discount tire to try and get it replaced. Mm -hmm. um, Do you actually think and, I had it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I should. <laughs> but no, I didn't ask anything because I got there and it was very crowded. And so I like just saved my car and called them. And I was like, hey, how long's the wait? And they were like an hour and 20 minutes. And I had work in an hour. And so I could, that was like, I could not do that. So I called another discount tire, like the next closest one. And they had like, an hour and a half wait or something. Mm. I was like, okay, maybe this is the uh, the wrong time of day <laughs> during the week to be doing this. Um, so I was just like, you know what? I don't have much of a commute. I live like three minutes from where I work. So I'll just drive on the spare until I can get an actual appointment. So I made like an appointment online with Scant Tire for today, Saturday. Hey. Um, and did eventually get that taken care of. So, um, so I got there today, next to the appointment and, uh, they were like, yeah, we can we can replace your tire. And luckily, because it was like, I think this this tire that had broken, I bought at Discount Tire. And so Discount Tire is very good at, at, at that. So like, basically, I didn't have to pay for that tire. Oh, it was under warranty. I think, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Discount Tire is very good at, at the warranty stuff. Like, I think it's like you pay $15, basically, when you first buy your tire. Yeah. And then whenever it breaks... You know, as long as it's within like the lifespan of the tire, they'll just like replace it for free. That's awesome. Um, which is great. Um, so yeah, I got there. They were very. Uh, it was it, it was still pretty busy today, but at least I had an appointment and I had nothing else to like get to today. Yeah. Um, so I went there and they replaced. They were like, "Yeah, let's the, we can we can replace that tire and replace it for free." Um, but also <laughs> the guy was like looking at my other tires. He was like, "Hey, can I can I take a look at your your other tires real quick just to make sure there's nothing wrong with them?" And he looks at the uh the spare and he says, "Uh, hey, by the way, if you want to come here, um, did you know that your spare is over twenty years old?" And I said, "Hold on, how is that possible?" <laughs> Wait, <laughs> and so, you drive like no, 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 a two thousand nine okay. Scion. That was it's not. A two, it's a twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. What? That's only twelve years <laughs> okay. ago. How yeah, the heck so in the he world? was he, he was wrong. He 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 did his math wrong. He like added an extra ten years by accident. So, but it was like a twelve year old tire. Okay, um, that makes which, like, sense. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I, was, what, I was freaking out at first. I was like, "How is that? Is it, why did did Dad like? Because I bought this car of Dad. Did Dad buy this car from somebody who had an old? Like they just got like an a really old tire to use as their yeah. spare, and that's what we've been using. Um, but no, it turns out he just did his math wrong, and I was like, "That's that's not that's not that's just that's not twenty years. That's <laughs> no, not twelve. Years. Twelve. <laughs> Sir. Um, Sir. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, that's not as bad. But still, we recommend that you replace it because it's like basically they recommended like over six years is about when you start 
to like replace your tire and especially if it's over 10 years old you need to replace it mm. um so like because it's like not even a matter of usage but just a matter of like chemical breakdown of the tire over time yeah um and so i was like okay so that's how i ended up having to uh get three new tires this week Ow. after having two flats Ow. <laughs> so um, yeah luckily at least one of those tires was uh free yeah um that's, that's good um that is good but what's weird is like uh w- whenever i buy tires i only think about the tire itself i don't think about the wheel but for the spare i guess they had to give me a new wheel because it was mm-hmm. like because the, the spare is like it's a different thing yeah than like a standard how much work. is that running? anyway how, how much if you don't mind like, so it was like so like the tire was like 67 dollars, which isn't bad yeah. and then the the wheel was another 70 <laughs> so Barf. yeah so it was basically like i had to buy both tires um but you know whatever it worked out i it's it's an unfortunate expense but one that i could afford so Eight. it's not terrible it could be worse it was just a, a weird unfortunate series of events yes yeah. <laughs> did, did both of those flats happen near the same spot or like no i mean not not, not that i spend a ton of time like going very far from where i live like sure. most of the places i go are you know but like no i i think i think the first one was just like you know bad luck i ran over a nail or something and the mm-hmm. other one was like this tire was like degrading and needed to be replaced for some reason like i think it, it just kind of just, i mean maybe i ran over something that like punctured it but yeah. I feel like it just like tore because it was like not in good shape or something. Because the whole th- you yeah. know it was, it was like the the tire was like falling off of itself. Oh gosh, it was like yeah, yeah you know for reasons we can't explain. It has lost the will to live, is what you're saying. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> my tire has not returned. No. Um. But yes, that was that was my uh, that was my tire adventure. My 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 buying new tires adventure yeah. you seem tired and, and yeah i <laughs> you know i actually am <laughs> i like i i got up today and i was i was kind of sleepy um and i went but i like i took a shower and i was awake and i felt good and clean and then i went out and it was raining and i went to a tire shop and that combination of things made me feel like an hour later i was like oh i feel gross again <laughs> yes um and then i went and picked up some groceries and then i came home and Watched Clone Wars and ate food, and then I napped for a while because um, I was tired again. <laughs> there it is. But um, but yeah, uh, like beyond that, it's been a good day. Beyond the fact that I had to spend a bunch of money on tires that I didn't want to spend, um, it's been a, it's been a, a, a fine day. Uh, how about you, Sam? How's your day been? Uh, it's been pretty good. I've been like busy, but like not like exciting. To talk about on the podcast, kind of busy, just like. I had a lot of work uh-huh. this week, and... Regular life busy. Regular life busy, and, like, Marion's feeling a little under the weather, but we think it's just growing oh. pains. Um, mm-hmm. She grows a lot, that girl. She do. She do be growing. Um, she's three years old. That's what, that's what, that's what they do. It's their one job. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, like, haven't had time for, for anything fun. It's just been, mm-hmm. like, doing adulty stuff. And not even, like, mm-hmm. interesting to talk about adulty stuff, just, like... I just, this has been a busy week, but the the Super Bowl is tomorrow, so I'm excited about that. And yeah, which is why we're recording a day early. Yes, because so that Sam can Super Bowl, and so I can I don't know do other things with with my friends who also don't watch the Super Bowl. So who knows? <laughs> I'll find Shame. Out. Um. But yeah, yeah, that's cool. But there has been a lot um, of Star so Wars news this week. That that's true. That that's true. My interest for sure. Mm-hmm. Do we want to talk about that? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Although you did have another uh, thing I, to talk I, about, right? Yeah, I did have a yeah one other thing I wanted to talk about, which is I yeah, I don't have a, a ton of stuff to talk about this week in terms of like what I've been like reading, watching, playing, mm-hmm. etc. Um, I I've also had a pretty busy week, but it was mostly like related to <laughs> getting tires replaced and going to therapy and dealing with therapy stuff. You know, I'm I'm in one of those patches in in going to therapy where it's like it's it's. I'm making a lot of good kind of progress and learning a lot of new things, but it, it's a lot, mm. you know? Yeah. You know, processing new revelations and new thoughts and ideas and, and it's a bunch, but it's, it's still very good. I'm still yeah, very yeah. glad I'm going. It's just, it's been, it's been what's occupying my energy this week. So. Sure. Um, but one thing I, I did do that was a fun thing is I have, uh, 
restarted playing the original Final Fantasy VII. Ooh. Um, so, uh, for those that don't know, here, here's me going into yet another... <laughs> Jack goes on a, a, a long tangent about explaining the history of the franchise so that I explain why I'm playing this game. Um, so, Final Fantasy <laughs> is a series of video games uh, It started in the 80s on the NES, and it's a, it's, uh, a series of RPGs where you play as a, a party of, of characters with various abilities. There's wizards and knights and, and swords and, and monsters and whatnot. Um, Final Fantasy VII came out in 1997 on the PlayStation, and it is considered to be one of the, the most beloved and influential RPGs ever made. Um, it kind of popularized the Japanese-style RPG in the West and the English-speaking world. Um, it's got... It, it it definitely shows its age, but it still holds up really well because it's got an incredible soundtrack and great art direction and interesting characters and a, and a cool world. Um, it's it's very like they, they kind of go all the way in sort of a not steampunk, but like kind of diesel punk direction where it's like it's it's a cross between kind of classic fantasy stuff like high fantasy things with monsters and magic and things. But also there's machinery and and like a sort of modern looking city and there's cars and stuff. And it's, it's a really interesting aesthetic that they have. Um, but yeah, so that came out and it became one of the most iconic video games ever made. And ever since then, people have been wanting a remake of this game, like a modernized uh, version of the game with, with improved graphics and modernized mechanics and, and all that. Um, and people have been wanting that for literal like decades uh, until I think maybe 2015, maybe they like officially announced that they're doing Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, and what they're doing is they so what they're doing is they're actually splitting the original Final Fantasy VII into three new games. Um, well, they're basically massively expanding upon the original story because in addition to Final Fantasy VII, a, Final Fantasy VII was was like so popular that it had a bunch of other spinoffs and stuff. So there's like. Um, there's a few different video games that expand upon the story of that world, um, which, by the way, Final Fantasy VII is the way that the Final Fantasy series works is it's like an anthology series. So it's not like you have to play Final Fantasy one through six to understand seven. They're like individual, like separate stories. They have some stuff in common in terms mm -hmm. of like gameplay and like a lot of characters have the same names and there's like similar sorts of you know, mechanics and abilities and things and so like yeah, there's a there's a similar vibe to things but it's not like most of the stories don't have anything to do with each other so seven is like a standalone thing um but then st seven got a bunch of different uh like spin-offs and like there, there's a there's a movie called final fantasy seven advent children um that came out in the like early mid 2000s so there's an that. animated movie yeah 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 um that kind of expands upon the story and is, is a sequel to it. And uh, there was a, there's a, like a shooter called Dirge of Cerberus. And there's a, uh, there's another one that was on the PSP. And anyway, point is, uh, there's a bunch of different Final Fantasy seven things that all create this larger story. And now the remake is taking from all of those different things mm. to create its like own kind of expanded version of the story. Um, What's interesting about it is that about this this kind of this remake trilogy is that they are the so part one was called Final Fantasy VII Remake and it covers basically the first third of the original game um, plot wise, um, but by the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake they have kind of gone off course from the plot of the original game and it's very it's really interesting it's it's kind of hard to explain without like going way like way more into detail than this podcast warrants but basically it's a very kind of meta self aware like. The, the plot of Final Fantasy VII Remake ends up being about changing fate and the idea that, like, you know, we're remaking this game and, and kind of... But it's more of a reimagining and we don't necessarily know that the events of the original game are going to be how they play out mm. in this trilogy because it's like they've already made some some major changes. Um, so that's exciting. Um, so I, I played the, the, the first one a few years ago when it, when it came out, uh, Remake, uh, and enjoyed it a lot. Um... I think the, the the creative director for the remake trilogy is Tetsuya Nomura, who was a character designer on Final Fantasy VII, but also uh, the is more known nowadays for being the creative director of the Kingdom Hearts series. So oh. it's, it's a very Kingdom Heartsy feeling game in some ways, um, from the from the combat to the insane convoluted plot 
it is, it is rather Kingdom Heartsy. So, nice. Um, and the Kingdom Hearts games have had some some cameos from Final Fantasy, from various Final Fantasy characters from throughout the games, but especially Final Fantasy VII. Like you fight Cloud and Sephiroth at different times. Oh yeah, and, yeah. In in the Kingdom Hearts games, which Cloud and Sephiroth are two of like the main. It's the protagonist and antagonist of Final Fantasy VII. Anyway, that's right. Um, so before I played remake, which is part one of the trilogy, I had played that portion of the original Final Fantasy VII. Um, and I hadn't like finished the rest of it. Uh, at the end of this month, on like I think the twenty eighth of February, something like that, uh, we are getting the next installment of the trilogy, which is called Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh-huh. Um, and it, you know it, it covers the next kind of third of the original game, but it's also you know massively expanded, but also very like different plot wise because of some of the events that happened in the first part of the trilogy that are like you know they, they've changed the plot. And so, um, so anyway, my goal now is for the, for the month of February, my gaming sort of aspiration is to play through the rest of Final Fantasy VII, the original one, then play uh, two of the spinoffs, and then play the DLC that is like that bridges re- remake and rebirth, Ooh. and then spend March playing Rebirth. So it's going to be Final Fantasy VII out the wazoo for a while for Dang. me. Um, it's yeah but i'm I'm enjoying it so far it's 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 just i'm it's a lot it's a lot (laughs) to to like the process but i'm it's it's been an exciting process um because i i've been like kind of going along side this or kind of following what what a friend of mine has been doing my friend danny who is uh equally kind of getting into the final fantasy 7 world lately like he, he he finished playing through the original recently and then played through a couple of the spinoffs and he, he like he's the one who told me like hey yeah so going into rebirth you need to have played this this and this uh, otherwise it won't make much sense <laughs> so mm-hmm. um but yeah it's good to have a guy uh, like of, that good to have somebody who's like yes it is walked the walk uh-huh. and like knows like what's what it's good absolutely yeah yeah especially when it's like like i mean video games in general can kind of be sort of like opaque and hard to get into in a lot of ways just you know just accessibility is an issue um but especially for something like final fantasy 7 that is like you know 20 plus years of uh of of, of lore that has built up over several games and other and movies and things over oh and i have to watch the movie too that's another thing i have to do (laughs) is watch the movie oh man um it's just, yeah, it's all very complicated, but it's 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 a cool kind of complicated that I'm excited to get kind of stick my teeth into, you know. Um, I actually I went to um, a couple years ago. Uh, they had a a worldwide concert tour for Final Fantasy VII Remake, where they played. They had like an orchestra play music from the, from Final Fantasy VII, and yeah. it was. And I went to one in Fort Worth, and it was very very good. Nice. It's one of my favorite concert experiences I've ever had because that I mean. The Final Fantasy games in general have really great soundtracks, but Seven in particular, I think, has some really like amazing, iconic themes, and just like it's one of the most beautiful and re-listenable video game soundtracks, in my opinion. Um, and it was great to get to hear some of that music live, and yeah. Anyway, so that's that's my long tangent about Final Fantasy Seven. Um, <laughs> so that's. That's what I've that's what I've been doing, and that's what probably what I will be doing for the next month is unraveling this this wild tale of of of, of one winged angels and 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 birds that you ride on and uh, men with with guns for arms and all the other things that make Final Fantasy VII the list. Oh man, <laughs> so, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Whenever whenever yeah, you're done um, with uh, whenever you're done with Final Fantasy VII, I want to know how it compares in terms of the scope and beauty and influentialness to Power Wash Simulator. Power Wash, yes. The, the natural comparison, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. Which actually, there's a connection <laughs> <What>? there. <laughs> so I think I mentioned this at once once before when we were back when we were talking about Power, Power Wash Simulator. Um, there is a... The Power Wash Simulator is a game that is actually published by Square Enix, who is the company oh, that publishes yeah. all the Final Fantasy games. And... They they released they've released a bunch of like 
DLC levels, some extra levels for Power Wash Simulator. Some of them are are paid levels, like the SpongeBob and the Back to the Future levels, for example. Um, but there's some other ones that are based on Square Enix properties that are just free levels that you can download. Um, and some of those are for Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> so you can, like, go to the bar from Final Fantasy VII and, like, clean it up, and you can go and, like, clean up one of the, like, the robots that you fight in the game. You you power wash that, and it's... I love it. It's, it's love a, it. a very, like... Uh, it's a match made in heaven? <laughs> I get... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, it's it's delightful the fact that this crossover exists. Wonderful. Um, I'm Good. glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't even remember that that, that it was a Square Enix yeah. thing. So it was just serendipity. That's hilarious. I'm just yeah. like, it's <laughs> that's nuts. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Sam, do you want to take us through some of what's new and upcoming in the world of Star Wars? Because like you said, we did have a few bits of news this week. Yes. So earlier this week, uh, a lot of us got our hopes up about some new star wars news that was coming out um the official star wars social media page along with uh empire magazine published this image that was a big old that felt like a big old tease for something big um it was just like the the traditional kind of like star wars like just like star field in the background and then in the a long time ago text and font and color it said hello there and then in all caps underneath it said tomorrow 4 p.m. And so, like, a, a lot of people were assuming, like, this has something to do with Obi-Wan. Uh, like, are we getting, like, an Obi-Wan season two announcement? So I think all of Star Wars social media was, like, going crazy for about 24 hours. And I've not heard this part of the story. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was, like, all over Star Wars Twitter and I, and Star Wars TikTok. And I was just, like, very excited for, like, because I know Hugh McGregor has said he's open to doing Obi-Wan Season 2 if the story is there and if Star Wars wants to do it. He's mm-hmm. he's ready to do it. Um, but all, other people thought maybe it's like we're getting some news about the Acolyte or something, but that doesn't have anything to do with Obi-Wan, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So the prevailing mm-hmm. theory was it was Obi-Wan Season 2. What wound up happening is <laughs> it's the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace. Which why they went with hello there doesn't make sense because that yeah, line that's is from not the third, that's from that's Revenge from of the Sith. that's from both New Hope and Revenge of the Sith. Like yes. that's what that line's from. So the fact that it's twenty fifth anniversary. They were just memeing. They, they were, were like it's a meme that like, people Star like. Wars meme. We'll get people excited and everyone's like, Give us <laughs> Obi Wan season two or we'll kill you. And then it's like, <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like Empire magazine has underestimated the, the power, power of Star Wars <laughs> fandom <laughs> yeah. and our obsession. Yeah. Uh, which I mean, it's cool. Like we got new interviews with uh, Hayden Christensen and Hugh McGregor and Natalie Portman and Liam Neeson. Um, so we got a lot of new stuff there. Cool photo shoots. Like there's like uh, Hayden Christensen like recreating the iconic like Star Wars Episode One poster with just like a picture of him standing like in the light and then a shadow of like the outline of darth vader behind him kind of thing it looks really cool yeah um i love that that that's a really cool picture because it's like i mean yeah, that was a cool idea like in the phantom menace for that poster it's but also it just, like posters i think of all time oh definitely it, it's, yeah. it's definitely like one of the yeah agreed um but yeah but now we've got like you know adult uh hayden christensen which like is actually now that I think about it, it's kind of weird because like Hayden Christensen isn't in the Phantom Menace. No, so like he's not, <laughs> but he's like the poster child for all this. Uh, which yeah. I mean, I'm not complaining. More Hayden Christensen is better Hayden Christensen. He is but... not literally the poster child. That was Jake Lloyd. It he was, was on the poster. He was the child on the poster. <laughs> yeah, and literally like no one's like Jake Lloyd has not been heard from for all this. So I am hoping he just like wants to. Like he just didn't want to be a part of it, and is they're respecting mm-hmm. his privacy. That's what I'm hoping. Um, yeah, I mean, based on what I know about the way that Star Wars has affected Jake Lloyd, I would not blame him for wanting to steer clear of all of this. Yeah, like you know? it seemed like he was kind of like his because Jake Lloyd's involvement with Star Wars and Star Wars fans has been like similar to Ahmed Best, but without like the, the Star redemption Wars arc. Yeah, without the, the the redemption arc of Star Wars fans re embracing the actor. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Not that Jake Lloyd needs a redemption arc. Jake Lloyd is exactly great. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, It's it's Star Wars fans who need to redeem themselves. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. so 
uh, all that to be said is we got some cool pictures, some cool interviews, and they're re-releasing Phantom Menace in theaters on May the 3rd. Uh, <laughs> Missed it by that they much. They really did. <laughs> they really did. But yeah, so... It's, but it's, Honestly, I, I mean, I get I, it's it's May the fourth weekend, and the third is Friday, so it makes sense. It does make sense. Like, it does make sense. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, I'm excited for that. That, that that's actually a pretty cool piece of news. Like, I don't actually know if I'll go into theaters to go see it again. Um, like, I might, but really, I'm just more excited for like the the poster they revealed for this because it's a really it's, it's a gorgeous cool episode one poster. It's and I, I, I would love I to have almost to as have good a copy of that. I think it's almost as good as the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary poster. That that's a gorgeous poster. Yeah, too. that I think is the best yeah. like re release poster I've seen of any Star mm-hmm. Wars thing. Yeah, but also like the the 40th anniversary uh, Return of the Jedi re release poster is like a more of a it's like a painted thing, whereas this is, looks more like a, a Photoshop job, a very good Photoshop it's job. Good. But it's like it's photos and stuff as opposed to the Return of the Jedi one, which is like a like an artwork, yeah, an actual work of art. Yes, um, they're both works of I know, art. I know, but, but like, like an actual like yeah physical media <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. I meant. Mm-hmm. No disrespect to anyway. visual art. Correct. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, I would love to have that poster. I don't know if they're going to sell it at any point, but I, I would love to have that. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the big piece of Star Wars news this week. Two other smaller pieces of Star Wars news came out this week. Uh, number one, Andor season two is finished filming, so uh, that should be released sometime in 2025. And Exciting. they announced that the acolyte. It's going to be coming out this summer on Disney+. Plus. I missed that. That's cool. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, I think I saw that, like, this afternoon. Someone posted mm-hmm. that. So, those are, that's the, that's our Star Wars news things, unless you have any other Star Wars news things. But that... Yeah. I don't think so. I, it's just nice to, to kind of see the, the, the way in which Star Wars is kind of picking up this year. In, in terms of, like, going into this year, we knew that, like, vaguely that there were some things coming out at some point, probably. But we didn't really have any idea of when. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, okay, we know we're getting, uh, the Bad Batch soon, the season three, and we know, you know, the release schedule for that, and now we know the Acolyte is coming out, yeah. and it's like, and, and there's the Phantom Menace re-release, so it feels like, okay, this year's getting populated with, like, the specifics of Star Wars things, um, because last year we got a ton of Star Wars stuff. Oh my god, um, we got so much Star so Wars like, stuff. Yes, yeah, so, like, I, I assume we're not gonna be getting nearly that much this year, but, like, we're still, you know... We're moving at, at, at a pretty good clip still. We're still mm-hmm. getting, yeah, the Acolyte and Bad Batch and probably some other things that I don't remember right now. But yeah. we'll talk about them eventually, uh, I'm sure. Maybe Skeleton Crew? Mm, maybe, yeah. but probably around Christmas, which I think is when we would get that, if we get it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah. But by the time this episode releases, it'll probably be around the launch of Bad Batch Season 3. Mm-hmm. So that'll be exciting, because it comes out in like two and a half weeks. Or something. Cool. Okay. When did we did we ever? I, I mean, I assume we probably talked about this, but like, I can't remember for whatever reason. Did we talk about the fact that there's going to be a Mandalorian movie? No, uh, we've mentioned that, it. I don't know if we've talked about it a whole lot. Okay, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to remember when that news came out and whether we were like in our kind of on our holiday hiatus at that point or whatever. Yeah, but it's coming. Anyway, it's yeah, happening. That's exciting too. Yeah, it's coming at some point. Probably definitely not this year, but, but eventually. It, but there's also going to be Mandalorian season four. Like it's going to be. They're going to be separate things. That's cool. Yeah, and I think Ahsoka season two is confirmed as well. Yeah, yes, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. Ah, so many good, exciting things in the Star Wars yes. world. Anyway, yep. The only thing I want more of that we haven't gotten confirmed is more Hayden Christensen live action. Yes, I would love that. Yeah, that's. I mean, if that's if this is the last time that we get to see like proper like Hayden Christensen Anakin live action is is Ahsoka season one. I would be okay with that oh, yeah. because it was just such a great, it a like it was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. But I would love to see more of it, yes. more of him in general. Um, but yeah, because as we say on this uh, podcast, more Hayden Christensen is better Hayden Christensen. That's so, the motto of our podcast. Yeah, it really that's is. What we say every time. It really is. <laughs> well, uh, with that out of the way, I think it's time for us to move on to our main segment this week, Sam. That it is. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, we were talking about the Clone Wars season three, episode seven. Assassin. Sam, where does this episode take place in the timeline? 21 years before the Battle of Yavin. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. One could say BBY. BBY. 21 baby. 21 baby. (laughs) I love it. Okay. Um, 
All right, so uh, the moral of this episode, Assassin, is the future has many paths. Choose wisely. <laughs> if you would like to assassinate the senator, please turn to page 13. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so, um, the impenetrable defense. <clears throat> One second. I need to get water in my throat. Cause my throat is <clears throat> From all that talking about Final Fantasy VII. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Criminals captured! Jedi Master Plo Koon and Padawan Ahsoka Tano successfully thwarted an attempt on Mace Windu's life, killing bounty hunter Aura Singh in the process. Since that time, young Ahsoka has grown strong in the ways of the Force. Now, after several harrowing adventures alongside her master, the two Jedi have returned to the temple on Coruscant to receive their next mission. Bum, bum, bum. There we go. Let's do it. Yeah, Aura Singh, who totally died. Cause, Definitely died. Because she blew up and we didn't see her body. <laughs> yeah, for sure dead. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. After her recent successful missions on Florum and Mandalore, Ahsoka is assigned by the Jedi Council and her master to take a break from the action, a decision she accepts grudgingly. But in short order, Ahsoka begins to have disturbing dreams of the bounty hunter Aura Singh, who threatens to come after someone close to her. The visions get more and more troubling, but Ahsoka is gradually able to discern the target, Senator Amidala. Padme is preparing to attend a conference hosted by Senator Bail Organa on Alderaan, which is to address the increasing humanitarian problem of the war refugees. Ahsoka gets permission to, re to join the entourage, but her visions are getting so intense that Ahsoka gets close to paranoia and begins to feel unsure of her ability to cope with the stress. Padme tries to assure her that she had felt the same sense of insecurity when she was queen of her home planet Naboo, an, encourage an encouragement which eases Ahsoka a little. As the conference begins and Padme makes her speech, Ahsoka's fears come true. Hora Singh indeed smuggled herself into the conference building and is preparing to kill Padme. Ahsoka arrives just in time to prevent Singh from hitting Padme dead on target with a sniper blaster, but the sender suffers a shoulder wound and Singh manages to get away. Ahsoka devises a, a trap to catch the assassin by having a luxury droid, wreathed in a robe, take Padme's place at the conference while Padme casts her speech through the droid via telecommunication from her quarters. Nevertheless, Singh sees through that plan and prepares to ambush Padme. Just in time, Ahsoka senses Singh's intent and intercepts her before she can carry out her assassination attempt. Before Singh manages to wound Ahsoka, she gloats that she was sent by an old enemy of Padme's to carry out revenge. Just before Padme manages to surprise the bounty hunter with a hidden blaster, stunning her to be picked up by Captain Typho. Ahsoka and Padme return to Coruscant, where they are received by Master Yoda and Anakin. While conversing, a group of clones escort a handcuffed Singh to prison. Following their report, Ahsoka uses her improved precognitive abilities to find out who is behind the assassination attempt. Although Ahsoka only gets a few blurry impressions, Padme is able to deduce that the main culprit is Zero the Hut, Zero. who holds her responsible for his arrest. Yes, uh, Truman Capote the Hut is here, everybody. Yes. He's back. Ahsoka and her master visit Zero within his cell and slyly manages to make him blab out that he's indeed behind the assassination. Satisfied, Ahsoka and his and, uh, Ahsoka and Anakin leave Zero to serve an additional term in prison, which causes the hut to holler vows of revenge. The end. Wow. That's it. Yeah, short short one. This is a yeah. short one. Uh this was a really cool episode. One of the things that I noticed that well, I, I I don't know if I think I think this is true that this is the first time we see Alderaan in Star Wars. I think. Hmm. We heard it mentioned about a bunch because Bail Organa's. Is... That's true. I think it's the yeah, first maybe, time maybe we've yeah. seen Alderaan. That's true. Let me. I'm gonna look at that real in quick. In chronological order. Yeah, appearances. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Book, 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 book. Uh, more book. Um, hold on mentioned in the clone wars mentioned 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 um yeah so the, this the first actual on-screen appearance is assassin this is this episode called yeah. it. nice going sam called it i did it um yeah that's neat that's cool yeah that's a, i did not notice that um yeah uh i thought it was neat that like they had a <laughs> they had yet another like Padme having a decoy thing. Yes, <laughs> I like the, I like how they were like, Padme is going to be assassinated. What do we do? And Ahsoka's like, I have an idea. Let's give her a decoy. And <laughs> Padme's like, We've never done this before. Wow, what a great idea! I know. <laughs> I I love the kind of parallels uh, with Anakin and Ahsoka with this episode and Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, because uh, yeah, yeah. like. 
uh, Ahsoka goes to like seek counsel from Yoda in this in Yoda's meditation chamber, which is this exact same place that um, he talks to Anakin about mm-hmm. the same types of visions of Padme dying and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he gives Ahsoka some very different advice. Like, yeah, I, I was yeah because yeah. because with Ahsoka, he's like, you just need to work on honing in your skills with the force like you're clearly onto something but like keep working yeah and, and he's like and, listen to these visions this is important yeah and then, <laughs> yeah and then when he talks to anakin he's like be prepared to let go of everything you hold dear like, <laughs> he's like <laughs> yeah. yeah okay yeah, yeah that's reassuring thanks yoda yeah but yeah it's, it's interesting how like like in yeah in this episode he's like these are visions uh you should listen to them because they're they're telling you something important that you should listen to and then when anakin does it Later on in Revenge of the Sith, Yoda's like, you know, the, the the dark side works in mysterious ways. It's possible that you're being manipulated, and which, like, to be fair, he kind of was. Oh, he absolutely but, like, was. <laughs> yeah. But like, but like, you know, it, it is interesting the the fact that like, you know, on the one hand, you've got you know Yoda like encouraging. Like I, I was like, given the context of Revenge of the Sith, I was kind of like, it, obviously, it's been a while since I watched this episode. I was expecting it something to happen here where like. You know, it, it turned out that she was being deceived somehow. That like, that she had like, she got a mis- like a vision, and she was like misinterpreting it somehow, and she was like getting letting her emotions get the better of her. But it really, it was just the whole time she was just kind of trying to interpret the visions, and the visions were correct. She was just trying to figure out how they how they were going to play out in reality, right? Um, which is which is you know a valid way of, of telling the story too, obviously. But it's like I, I expected it to be a little more like twisty, um, and a little more like you know. No, absolutely. You know, try not to predict the future because, you know, always in motion the future is, as Yoda says. And, you know, but it ended up being more like, oh, uh, Ahsoka unlocked a new ability. Now she can do cool things with it. <laughs> and that's yeah. the story. That's um, it. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a good episode. Um, the, <laughs> I, there's, a, there's a bit near the end where uh, Ahsoka's like, they're talking to Zero the Hutt in his, his jail cell. And Ahsoka is like, uh yeah, we've got our in custody, and she already told us everything. Yeah, and so cool dirty Zero the Hutt's, What the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> I, I so I, I like googled this because I was like, is that is that entrapment? Is that illegal? Is that a war crime or something? And no, actually, it turns out in America, cops can just lie. That's just a thing they can do. <laughs> and yeah. It's just cool, I guess. I was like, okay, yeah, cops so, lie to you. You not, can't lie to cops. A, Oops. Yeah, not not a not an not illegal um and not a war crime, but still not cool. So yeah. <laughs> sketch as heck you that's know, for sure i was like that that's that's not a cool way of doing things ahsoka yeah <laughs> like what the... anyway whatever um he deserved it but still something anyway um this is cool i also liked that in this episode we got a little more like we don't necessarily get a ton of interaction between like just one-on-one ahsoka and padme a lot um and it was cool to get kind of that interaction this time like yeah. there were a few you know, there was that a moment when it was like, um, like like the the first couple times when Ahsoka goes to talk to Padme, Padme's very like, "Oh, my friend Ahsoka, how are you?" And you know, you, you get a sense that like they do actually like they are actually friends and they enjoy spending time with each other outside yeah. of just being, you know, related professionally. Um, right. And then and then there's that that whole conversation they have, uh, like on the ship with. Uh, Ahsoka and Padme, like Padme, kind of consoling uh, Ahsoka and advising her, and like, like you know, relating her own experience as being, you know, a young leader and having you know a lot of pressure on her, and then just kind of that, that moment of like them relating to each other was really nice. It was cool to kind of see Padme in a like kind of an older sister sort of mentor ish role. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt. That it definitely nice. felt like uh, Ahsoka's her little sister in this moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, which is which cool. Is cool. Indeed. Um, yeah, and Aura Singh's alive. Yeah, that happened. Indeed. Which, like, and now not she, all that surprising. Right. But, and now but, she's like, in prison yeah. on Coruscant. Yeah, and they, they they explain it in one line how she's alive. They're like, she's like, you left me for dead, but but uh, uh, what's I can't uh, crap pirate man. Why can't I remember his name? Hondo, Hondo, yeah. Hondo pulled me yeah. out of the wreckage. Yeah, uh, she says she says Hondo pulled me out of the wreckage. But also, she says you left me for dead, and I'm like, 
you were trying to murder people and she was trying to stop you. Of course she left you for dead. Yeah, like, she shot down your ship. That's what that's what that is. That's, that was her intent. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You left me for dead. Like, she's like mad. Like, like yeah, I shot your ship down. She's like, not that, fair. That was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> the heck, man? I thought we were friends that, you know, I was trying to kill your friend, but whatever. Oops. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. It's cool to see more of Aura Singh, too, because she's a cool character. I think before going into this this episode, uh, it'd been a while, just like based on the title of the episode, I was like, oh, this is an episode about uh, Asajj Ventress, right? But no, it wasn't. It was about a different uh, pale-skinned, tall-skinny, sort of bald uh, assassin. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah, I was like, no, it's, it's a different person. It was like the episode started. I'm like, oh no, this is the this is Orsig. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, they've got similar vibes. They you do. Know? They're both angry and violent, and and uh, tall and skinny, and and pale skinned. Yeah. And why not? Marion. Hi, Marion. Come here. Marion. What's that, Uncle Jack? <gasps> Marion. Hi. Let's see what happened. Let me put the headphones on your head so you can hear. Hello, Marion. How are you today? Hey. You doing all right? No, I don't. Yeah, you don't want to? Okay. She doesn't want to? Okay. Say bye, Uncle Jack. Bye, Bye-bye. Okay. Have a good night. <laughs> Go to Mama, okay? Get your milk. Here. Marion. 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 Sam's, Sam's, <laughs> Sam's got a bottle of milk in his hand now. Yep. Should I drink this chocolate milk? All right. I gotta go. I have to deliver the chocolate milk. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. This isn't going as planned. Nothing to see here. We're back, everybody. Uh-huh. I mean, anyway, candy. Whoa, whoa, oh, that's cool. What were we talking about? We're, we're almost done. We're talking about... What? We're almost done. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Sam's got candy in his mouth now. Yeah, this is a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. This is my favorite candy. Mm. Mm. It is, it's quality. Mm -hmm. You know what's... The, the best kind of Reese's is, are the, the smaller ones. Not the mini ones, but just like the small ones that come in the individually little... Like, oh, the tinfoil wrap. ones? Yeah. I feel like those are the like the best balance of like chocolate and peanut butter, and they're like the most like You're right. easily just like poppable. You know. You're right, but there's something, but it's like it like doesn't feel like, like the ratio is better, but the original peanut butter cup is like the best size, like in terms of portion. Yeah, that's ideal. I guess. I'd rather have yeah. like, but it's also I don't know. I'd rather have one normal. The original's cup. too messy for me. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just, like, I feel like I it gets melty and, like, kind of all over my hands more easily than if it's, like, the one thing that is, like, I feel like the, the smaller ones are kind of more solid and less melty. Yeah. I don't know. Fair enough. Anyway. Fair enough. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> so, we were talking about this episode. Um, all right. Uh, do you have a favorite part of this episode, Sam? Assassin. Assassin. Um, I don't know. It was all, like... This episode is kind of all over the place, and mm -hmm. I don't know if like one moment stood out per se. Yeah, it all felt very kind of my, okay. Yeah. No, my favorite was the surprise zero the hut. That was my favorite part of the episode. <laughs> it's like oh, we get zero. zero yes, hut. he's hilarious. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. It's, yeah, it, um, I, I have similar feelings to zero as I do to Hondo, but like not as much. You know, like yeah, yeah. like whenever you get he's a silly Hondo. boy, he's a silly guy that like you you enjoy seeing on screen because he's a wacky guy. Yes, yeah, yeah. So that for zero was my uh, mm -hmm. my favorite moment. It's like oh, surprise zero. What about you? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, again, I I, I kind of feel similarly in that there's not a like there's not really a standout moment mm -hmm. for me. Um, I guess i i kind of liked the 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 moment when when ahsoka finally like thwarts uh or sings plot and like shows up at the very last second jumps up in front of padme and deflects the one blaster bolt that was cool and and then and then immediately after that like drags or sing out of the the vents with the force and that just, like, falls on cool. the ground yes <laughs> I forgot like, yes that. got you finally yeah you yeah. that's a cool moment you're mine yep. um MVP. I'm gonna feel like it's it's got you know Soka. No, right? it's a zero. Oh well. No, yeah, it's Soka. You're up. right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Soka. Yeah, um, and genuine runner-up would be uh, Padme because you know. Yeah. She still. 
kicking ass and doing cool things yep. and, and being a, a cool person. Yep. And she and she does get a she she has a, a similar moment to like uh, um, Satine from her, from mm. one of those recent episodes where like you know she takes out her own little gun and goes pew and and stops the thing. Yep. She's like she's like I can defend myself when I need to. Yep. You know. Um, except her gun is is bigger than than this teen's tiny tiny gun. Yep, just tiny have the uh, the cricket from Men in Black. Just the Men in Black gun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, um, yeah. MVP Ahsoka. Uh, main character kills none. Lost limbs none. Wilhelm screams. I didn't hear any. Well, um, more Star Wars is better. Star Wars. How does this episode make the movie, the movies and the rest of Star Wars better? I feel like we already kind of talked about it, but like the, um, I think the the developing of the relationship between uh, ahsoka and padme a little bit um the advancement just kind of the showing that uh, ahsoka's abilities as a jedi are growing mm-hmm. um yeah and also her, deciding and her... to not kill off Ora Singh was better for star wars because <laughs> Ora Singh's, <laughs> yeah. Ora Singh's just a very interesting character and we yeah. only got one episode yeah, another interesting got, like, cool one character with a cool design wanna, like not have just one arc you know Yes, Star Wars. I think like the Star Wars prequels in general have a bad habit of killing off characters that are cool and have cool designs, killing them off too early, which is why they brought back Maul. That's exactly <laughs> why they brought back Maul. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, agreed on that. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's good. Good episode. Yep. See, so yeah, that's our main segment. Um, I guess yeah. So this is, this has been a, a pretty short episode. So before we go, uh, Sam, do you want to talk a little bit about just like I want to know what your perspective is as a a Kansas Cityan? Is that I don't know if that's yeah, like, no, that's whatever. It. Sure, you got it. Uh, a Kansas Cityan uh, living in Kansas City the day before Kansas City goes to the Super Bowl. Uh, the Super Bowl it, it's in Vegas, but you know they're one of the teams. So yes, uh, what what's the atmosphere like? in KC right now is it, is it all the buzz it is, is it excited dude KC are, are gets people... KC gets electric man it's wild like uh-huh. the like because I, I I've having not grown up in Kansas City but having grown up in in Dallas and like what mm-hmm. just like the excitement around Dallas sports doesn't compare to the excitement around Kansas City sports um and just like mm-hmm. around Kansas City pride because we're like like Kansas City just like is very much its own city with a really defined city identity that I don't think mm. of, of any city they've ever lived in has something quite like this. Cause like Dallas mm. is more just kind of like, it's a flavor of Texas, whereas Kansas city is just yes. its own thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, da- Dallas feels very kind of like, like uh, Dallas is fine, but it feels very kind of generic almost. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. A flavor of Texas is a, is a good way of putting it. Mm-hmm. It's like Dallas doesn't have its own identity so much. It's just kind of like it's a big city in Texas where there's a bunch of businesses and a big airport and yeah. yeah. It's like it doesn't have nearly as much of an identity as like like for example Austin has very much its own oh, identity. Oh yeah. yeah. Austin, it sounds like Casey has its own identity. Yeah, Austin, too, yeah. San Antonio both have more personality than Dallas for sure. Fort Worth <laughs> has more personality than Dallas, but don't tell people from Dallas that they'll fight you. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah but like i don't know yeah it, 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 it's really cool really exciting the whole city gets amped up like during all of the nfl season every friday everyone wears red like it's red oh, friday cool. you wear like there's a game this weekend you're wearing chief colors and if the chiefs win over the weekend on monday everyone wears red again like mm-hmm. it's it's like everyone gets into the chiefs especially because now that now that patrick mahomes has been to um like he's won the afc he's been to the afc championship game every year that he's been the starting quarterback so he's been what he has been one game away from the super bowl for every year he's played for the chiefs basically wow uh, which cool. is nuts so patrick mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs are kind of shaping up to be like the new like Tom Brady and the New England Patriots from like when we were in high school and college. Um, just like dynasty material, like we're we are going to the Super Bowl just about every year. Like we've been this is our fourth Super Bowl in six years. Mm-hmm. And we won last That's year. Cool. This is our this is like one of our first opportunities to like win back to back Super Bowls, and I feel pretty confident about our ability i don't want to jinx anything but um 
No, Sammy it jinxed it by no! saying it on this podcast. <laughs> no, no, oh, no. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Um, <laughs> this very consequential podcast that has a lot to do with sports. Um, yes, but yeah, no, it, 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 it's it's a lot of fun. Um, every just everyone gets into it, and it's just like very. It's it gonna it's like a small town feel in a mid sized city. If that makes any sense. That's cool. Like, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, because cool. Kansas City is about the same size as Austin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that, like, you know, as someone who has very little interest in sports, I feel like living in Austin, this is the first time that I felt any sort of, like, personal investment or excitement about a sporting team. And that's specifically uh, Austin FC. Nice! Because, so like, like, Austin has a, like, I mean, the fact that we we have our own, like, professional soccer team and it's, like... A, I feel like soccer is a more interesting, exciting sport to me than football is. I've just never really been a football guy, but like, yeah. I don't know. Soccer is like, it's like the world's sport. It's like no, the yeah. national thing. And soccer, now Austin soccer has is way its more own. Fun to, soccer is way more fun to follow than football, I think. Yeah. It's way more fun to like sit down and watch than a game of football. Yeah. It's more active instead of like stop and start, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, as much as I like don't really like... <laughs> I, I I still don't pay much attention to sports in general, even when it comes to to um, Austin FC. But I pay slightly more attention to Austin FC than I do any other sporting sporting team. So it's like, yeah, you know, I don't know. I feel like I part of it is just feeling like I feel at home in Austin, and that, and like this is a you know Austin FC. It's, it's like the one team that everybody in Austin is like excited about when there's like mm. sporting things happening. Um, and it's it's always cool, like during soccer season, to like you know see people on on game days. Everybody's wearing the Austin FC green, and nice the black and verde as the, the Ooh, colors. Yeah, that's good. nice. Yeah, I like. That. I really like their their color combo. It's it's a good like it's bright and but like not like gross. <laughs> it's it's like it's a good it's 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 striking yeah. and bright and cool, but like not like you know obnoxious to me that's good i like um, that so that's cool i think yeah. also uh, to be perfectly honest i think part of it also has to do with the fact that i was watching ted lasso when i like at the same time that that austin fc was like doing really well yeah and i was like oh i can like appreciate like soccer a little more because of like i have this emotional connection to it because i've seen these i mean fictional characters but you know like yeah yeah but i, you know, I don't know there, there's something about it that i just like you know i get this i get this a little more this is cool this is no yeah is nice, like yeah. yeah it, like if I were to ever buy like a sports team shirt, I might buy like an Austin FC shirt or something. That's awesome. But, I like, support that, yeah, big time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Kansas City is also a big soccer city as well. Mm-hmm. We like to call ourselves the soccer capital of um, of the United States, but I don't know, like if that <laughs> uh-huh. that doesn't mean anything. Uh, but it's <laughs> other than marketing, it's fun. But the whole city uh-huh. does get around soccer more than any other city I've ever seen before. It sounds like Austin has a great soccer culture as well. And I know I have friends out in Cincinnati, and they say that um, uh, FC Cincinnati is um, is a big old deal. Um, but what was I? Uh, oh yeah, so Sporting KC is our like men's soccer team, but the team that everyone's really excited about right now is KC Current, which is our women's soccer team, because they're getting close to finishing the first ever dedicated women's sporting arena for anything. Um, yeah, it's it's just really well, our sibling group chat is blowing up. It's really distracting. Uh, <laughs> it's the, we're getting yeah. notifications from Max and Gracie, Max and Gracie yelling about up. something. <laughs> yeah i just a lot of all caps things going on in the corner but anyway uh yes uh casey current our women's soccer team their stadium is uh in like right near downtown right on the river um and it's really like i drive by it every day to and from work and just seeing like this big old stadium like it's like a fifteen thousand seat stadium like it's big mm-hmm. yeah, um yeah. it looks really cool um Patrick Mahomes and his wife are like majority owners in the team and are, are a big reason like why it's getting so big and so much notoriety and it's like mm-hmm. made global headlines as like the first ever stadium built solely for a women's sports team and it's right here in Kansas That's City. Super cool. It's super yeah. cool. Yeah, so uh if I yeah, me and Sarah have talked if we ever get season tickets to any sort of thing, it would be Casey Current. Just because it's that's cool. It's really really cool. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
And they have cool I, colors too because they're they're like bright teal and red. It's just really cool. Ooh. Really cool. Oh, that color is cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Austin also has it's like like Austin FC has its uh, the Q2 Stadium, which is it, it's a relatively new stadium because Austin FC is a relatively new team, and um, so it, it was only built like several years ago. So it's it's like this nice big like really kind of modern looking white dome building and it's it's like the grounds around it are really like nice and clean and pretty um and i like you know i've never been there myself but i've driven past it many times because I, I drive like directly past it going to my friend's house um and it's it's weird like because <laughs> it just feels like a kind of a normal like whatever suburban austin neighborhood sort of uh and driving kind of down a, a, a sort of major street and you know at, at one point, I look over and it's like, oh, there's a giant stadium right there, just kind of like next to this car wash or whatever. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, huh, that's kind of neat, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. What about the. Uh, like, uh, oh, sorry. No, you the ahead, good. Oh, no. I was just. No. no. You okay. go. I was going to ask about what what is the. Uh, what are what, what's, what's the Casey vibes when it comes to uh, Taylor Swift? What's the the Swifty? Oh, dude, we are nuts for Taylor Swift. Okay, like, so it's, ev- we're into Taylor Swift. In we're KC. very much embracing. I mean, okay. like everybody who's cool is embracing Taylor Swift. And, and I'm like, sure, yes. You're all about like like Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. We're big fans, or you're just mm-hmm. like some jamoke with more testosterone than brains, being like, Ugh, she's ruining football because she's supporting her boyfriend at the game like no. like shut up like <laughs> shut up <laughs> who cares no. you're, you're, yeah so we're big fans of taylor swift and taylor swift is like uh kind of revitalized a lot of kansas city just like just because her, like all the attention of like her being here all the time and just all like the media attention of this mm-hmm. just her presence has like generated a lot of like revenue for the city mm-hmm. um and stuff which is like it's it's astonishing to me how like incredibly famous and successful Taylor Swift has gotten to the point where like yeah just like her being in a particular place like like it makes sense to me that that, that that's the case that you know Casey has had this had like some sort of economic upturn because of Taylor Swift dating a football player from here yeah. it's like man, she, like I feel like in the past like year especially she's just been on top of the universe like the most oh, famous yeah. person in the world and yeah like and it's it's it is nice to know that like like at least my obviously i don't i don't know her personally shocking i know oh come on man (laughs) but just like it seems like she's a pretty like like cool nice down relatively down-to-earth person but you know uh, the, the, the fact that like the most famous millionaires go yeah yes exactly so yeah that's what i was gonna say (laughs) that like on like on the one hand it's like she seems like a kind of a a nice cool person and it, that that makes me happy that like you know the the like most gigantic celebrity of the moment that everybody's like super into and kind of worshiping at least they, they seem like they're a decent person but on the other hand also the fact that I, I when i found out she's a billionaire now i was like oh that actually kind of lessens my opinion of her a little bit <laughs> like the yeah. fact that she's a billionaire um and then of course there's all that like stuff going on that this been going on recently and and in like kind of recent months people talking about like how how many how much like greenhouse gas emissions yeah she's like with her private jet yeah. Yeah, anyway, she has that's... cut back not to like defend a billionaire but <laughs> um she like I've, I've been doing some like reading up on like the her like private jet usage carbon mm-hmm. emissions stuff and like yeah she was like the number one private jet user in 2022 but in 2023 she didn't even make the top 10 so well, that's something that's i something. guess yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, I, I was. I think I saw a video earlier today about like, um, about private jets and about how basically private jet flights are like subsidized by the government in the same way that all like that like commercial airlines are. Um, but like awesome. in terms of like t- in, in, in terms of like tax revenue, uh, this, I, I think it's something like like I'm I'm probably getting these numbers wrong, but it was something agreed just like seventy percent of the like of the flights that happen are private jets but private jets only account for two percent of the like tax revenue so it's like anyway some some crazy but anyway i don't know how I feel about that anyway yeah yeah billionaires shouldn't exist but no, that aside shouldn't seems cool i guess <laughs> yeah 
um but yeah and she won grammy album of the year and stuff and announced her new album at the same time that was she neat. did it was anyway neat. thus ends our probably only one time segment where we talk about taylor swift <laughs> this yeah. has been unlimited content taylor's version everybody i like it i like it yeah talking about the super bowl taylor's version yeah and Something, something Taylor's version. I like the so, Taylor's version joke. That's fun. It is fun. <laughs> it, it is fun. It does. It hasn't gotten old to me yet. No. It so. hasn't. <laughs> oh man. Well, Jackwood, I should get going because apparently my daughter's not going to sleep. So oh, I need no. to log off. Marion. Uh, but which, by the way, I think was this was this the first Marion cameo on the podcast? This was the first Marion cameo on the podcast. <laughs> ah! Exciting. Yes. She's been a guest. I she count has. that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway yep. um well yeah uh thank you everybody for listening as always um if you'd like to join in the discussion leave a voicemail at 512-850-6653 and we might feature your comments questions or corrections on the podcast join us next time when we'll be talking about the clone wars season three episode two arc troopers so that's a good episode that'll be fun that's a good episode um, yeah we've got a series of of like solo episodes that are going on we had this one and then arc troopers then after that we'll have sphere of influence will be a solo episode and then we'll get back into arcs for a bit but um, nice yeah this this has been nice to just have kind of some some low-key episodes you know oh yeah um well all right uh take care of yourselves everybody um enjoy the super bowl i mean you 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 already have presumably if you've enjoyed it it's it's happened already because this will come out in the future but anyway congratulations to whatever team won unless it's not kansas city in which case Dang. Yeah, um, San Francisco sucks. Boo, San Francisco. Boo. <laughs> anyway, uh, may the force be with you all. Thank you for joining us. Take care of yourselves. Have a good night. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Don't do spice. All right, cut the chatter. Roger, Roger. <laughs>